You're turning hundreds of thousands of pounds selling reconditioned wheelchairs on eBay. You don't even sell them on your own website. What are you going to do about it? You're going to set your own website up and you're going to turn this into a commercially profitable enterprise that now starts to work nationwide. This business, I believe, has huge potential and I can't wait to share it with you. Hello, campers. Welcome back to Business Broadcast. JP, welcome back. Thank you for having me once again. Do you know what? Sometimes I listen to that jingle. I'm like, yeah, it really gets me going. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you actually da, put that da, together da, four years ago. I like ago. it so much, yeah. Four years um, on Monday. We're recording this on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah four years. Monday just gone. Um, I've been doing this podcast. And they've got the most listens probably since you've come along in the last yeah, 10 days. There you go. Let's see. I start it, I leave, and I come back to save it. Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> did what like I that, was thinking. He? Did it like that, didn't he? No. Hopefully, he was edit- ever is editing this can do a close up of the anger then on his face mm. as I said that. Anyway, well, back to some serious business stuff. Some um, stuff. Let's have a look. Our guest today is Logan Harper. This is a good little business, this, isn't it? We had yeah. a little chat with him before. Mm. This one is. Uh, Good little niche. Yeah, very. You, you like you like a niche, don't you? I do like niche businesses. I think it's they're very good for income. It's whether you can scale them enough to get them to be commercially profitable enterprises that someone wants yeah. to buy when you decide enough is enough. But I think he, he's obviously a smart chap, and he obviously works out because whenever I think of someone called Logan, I always think of Wolverine, and this guy of has course. got Wolverine's arms. He has, yes. He's working out on them arms five times a week. Yes, but apparently that's because the electric uh, mobility uh, wheelchairs that he sells are very heavy. So there and you that go. is his business. A very it is. interesting business. He takes ex lease electric wheelchairs that's what we think yes yes then refurbs them refurbs them then sells them sells them privately so he's got to deal with like the big mobility are they like a charity or like a government organization who do I like the mobility the leasing funding companies i reckon it's the nhs and probably collect them don't they lease them right. out to someone that person probably unfortunately dies or doesn't need a wheelchair anymore because that's a nice story isn't it? Um, mobile again (laughs) and then they strip them down refurbish them and sell them on Um, and it sounds like he's making very good margins 35% net profit Um, and he's got this big win here where he pays everything with VAT but then doesn't have to charge VAT because of the sector it's got a little nuance to it so he's getting good VAT returns as well so he gets instead of doing a VAT return and paying it out every month he gets like money most back. of us he gets the money back from the VAT man mm. to cover the cost of the business oh, well we we used to have that when we had a big bakery we used to get all of our VAT returns we got VAT money back is bakeries not well it's we there's two it's types of VAT. if you serve it hot is that right no 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 but come yes that would if you was if you serve it hot you have to pay VAT but there's a difference. There's zero rated and VAT exempt. What you right. want to be is zero rated, which means that you can claim everything back, but you sell at zero. When you're exempt, oh, which good, is childcare, is exempt. So you have to pay all your VAT on your electric, on your rent, or whatever right. it is. But um, you don't charge VAT for the service. You don't. Gotcha. Don't so you can't it. recoup that. No, but zero rated, you still do a VAT return and you just help yourself to money back all the time. Oh, so another nice. niche business would be like if you're making books because they're zero rated. But you're buying they? Yeah, yeah, but you're buying all your paper and you're buying your electric and all of that. So you've got all these VAT bills, but then you sell loads that you have no VAT on, so you're just getting VAT every back every month. So this is why you're so happy to be the, the multi-thousand copy seller that you are every month, because you're basically, you're getting a, you're getting a double payday. I don't sell thousands <laughs> of my books. In fact, most people don't even know I sell books. There I you, have, go. There you go. Have a, little, have, a little, have a little punt, if you like. Here you go. I've even got you some music. Um, yeah. There you go. If you'd like to read some books, why not check out my books? <laughs> you can buy them on my website, jamesinclair.net. I've wrote four books. One's called The Millionaire Clown. One's The Experience Business. One's Getting Customers. And one, when I finally bring it out, I've done all the work, just haven't brought it out. It's called The Dream Team. <laughs> I've even, do you know what? I've even done the audio version of The Dream Team. Done it all. What's happened to it? I, I just, my team are used to this. Where, where, are, where are they now? Nige has just disappeared. To get you a coffee. Oh, to so get me a coffee. <laughs> I won't let you throw Nige under the bus. with his coffees. We need Nige, can you come in this tray. way? He's can you come, come in this way? <laughs> just so I just said, no, I want you to come in on shot as you come in behind me. Uh, ch- Chuds is fuming. Because just said, where is Nige? Oh, he's bought biscuits <laughs> and everything. Oh, yes. Here he is. Oh, yes. This is. Here we go. The podcast is finding its home now. 
That's I mean, lovely. I like what you've done here. Next door is one of Essex's most independent bakeries. We make cookies, Thank we you, make mate. cakes, and what you've brought in oh, here got, is packaged right, biscuits like, yeah. from someone else. <laughs> Is that is that Chud's? Is? Uh, yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you very if much. If you'd like a coffee, Nigel is available. Uh, <laughs> in the comments, and he'll come to your house and personally deliver you wherever you are in the country a coffee. There you go. There we go. Um, should we get back to talk about Logan and his fantastic business? Yeah, Logan and his fantastic um, business. So he's doing an estimated monthly revenue of thirty-five thousand pounds. Been trading zero to three years. Um, has team members? Yes. He's got four plus himself. See, a lot of people are starting to clock onto this now. They don't include themselves because they get told off by you, didn't they? In advance. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, challenge one, managing stock to cash flow. Because it sounds like they have to buy lots of... It sounds like he's buying it at like, quite Can I just big say, bulk. We've done five episodes of the podcast today because we, we're very busy people, JB and I. Myself more busier than him. <laughs> uh, that's fair to say uh, to yeah, you, yeah. to be honest. Uh, uh, we anyway, can't talk so about it now, but the, the lunchtime phone call that you had was uh, was my favourite moment of one of my favourite moments of James Sinclairism. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Uh, why? I can't say it now. I'm can I, like at the I can't, yeah, I know, but I just think it's. I had a very important phone call. Very important. We were discussing millions of pounds. I mean, literally. Tens of millions of pounds. Tens of millions of pounds on this phone call. And he can't get him off the phone quick enough because we've had a seven arrive. quid curry from around the corner. Oh, yeah. They were sitting there eating chicken curry and she rice. Was even and I wanted it. We, we, she's like, oh, we've got this uh, this beautiful network in Denise. She's coming. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. <laughs> we got I'd a lunch. I'd also like to eat my lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've got a lunch. You can come to it. He's got a lunch here, love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, Challenge one, yeah, managing stock to cash flow. Challenge two, increasing oh, supply. I just of- say that, that, that that was my point on this. Sorry, go on. We've done five episodes of this podcast today, yes. um, and a lot of them have been talking about the stress of holding stock. Yes, because that is cash, isn't it? It's profit yeah. and cash, and um, it, it's a regular theme. Yeah. Oh, that's well, you, what I was going to say. You were saying in, if people haven't listened to the previous episode, make sure you go and check them out because they're all fantastic, by the way. But you, you, for party pieces, are holding about two and a half million quid's worth of stock, yeah, yeah. which is effectively like two and a half million quid's worth of cash that you can't you know, do just, anything so, with. So that, that part of our business, yeah, you, you, you just have to hold stock in that business. Um, but usually what happens, and I don't want to disappoint people, but when I've studied companies that hold lots of stock, if they're profitable, because <laughs> there is a difference between profit and cash available. Um, yeah, we, you, you can be very profitable and have no cash because you've got all your cash in stock. Yeah. But if you go through enough cycles, and I'm afraid to say that could be 10 or 15 years mm. of going through making profits. And then you get to a point where you keep your stock level. But as the business is growing, so say um, Logan, who is our guest today, you know, he's saying, oh, do you know, I need to hold more stock because I'm selling more wheelchairs. Um, uh, or I'm going to branch into electric scooters or whatever he's doing. He's going to use all of his profits to buy more and more stock. Yeah. And he'll get to a point where he doesn't have to keep on doing that because yeah. the business will get to a level where it can just cash flow itself and it's bringing in loads of cash. Um, but that might take 10 to 15 years. And I just like to remind people that this little thing here is a marathon and not a sprint. Yeah, absolutely. Worth reminding. Um, so if you're looking for fast cash advice on this podcast, go elsewhere. Listen to a crypto podcast. Unfortunately, everyone, you managed to bring all your wealth together when you're about 10 years away from death. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bode well for you at the moment, does it? Blimey. No. Uh, challenge number two, increasing supply of stock coming in. So there you go. It comes back to stock. Hey, sorry, I'm going to circle back. So it's two and a half million quid worth of stock you carry at party pieces. Yeah. As a group, no, how no. much money is held in stock? Oh, probably... A little bit more, three million quid. Really? But two and a half million is what I'm talking about in the building next door. So that includes some food and perishables because we distribute to all our own sites. But a majority is teddy bears, fluff, and children's arts and crafts. So with the... Um you're fascinated by this. I am. I am. I'm intrigued because we went for a little walk around there the other day. I, did, I didn't realise the scale of it until you walk into it. Like, oh bloody hell! This is a this is a big old operation. The perishable side of it. Are you less of a fan of that? Because obviously with teddy bears and fluff it will sell at some point but what you've got in terms of food and sort of supplies yeah, but we, it's a, moving every day okay you know i've got what well, sitting on a quarter of a million quids worth of ice cream we're an ice cream company so it's important that we have ice cream it makes sense yeah <laughs> um i'm probably sitting on fifty thousand pounds worth of ice cream cones chocolate flakes bakery products and donuts at any one time 
fifty thousand pounds worth of uniforms than frozen chicken nuggets and chips. You know, it's so always ha- moving. So how do you, if you wanted to scale up like the food services business that you've got, and say an opportunity, which, I am which doing. You, okay. So how do you, how do you scale that when it, the the stock is perishable? Do you have to? Is there a different level of thinking, or do you do you have to go and win the client that you're going to supply? To? Let's say, for example, like, I don't know, you're in the leisure space, Park Dean Resorts. All of a sudden, go, we want to come to you rather than one of the other big. Suppliers. Not worried about food stock. Not, Not worried, worried about that because it will always sell unless you're an absolute numpty. Um, when you're selling food and food services product, is transport that is the challenge, not so much the oh, food. Oh, really? You know, getting the vehicles in and out of cities, um, yeah. having the wheels, having freezer vehicles that break down all the time because you know they're challenging. Um, getting the drivers, they're, they're the challenges with delivering food, transport. Really? So if you look at the, mm. the world's biggest food logistics company or Dogs. food services business, no, food services business would be Cisco. They own Break Brothers. I don't know if you've okay, heard of Breaks. Yeah, yeah. Kent Frozen Food. They own yeah, yeah. the massive multi-billion organisers. Cisco owns it. Yeah, not the rapper. No, I realised. Not. <laughs> <laughs> no, not... But the, com- the computer company, no, the technology no, that's company. that's spelled with a C. Oh, okay, fine. There's another Cisco spelled with an S, S Y S. And then there's Cisco the Thong Song. So, not the guy who wrote the yeah. Thong Song. He's no, not no. a food services entrepreneur. No, no. Sure, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> yeah, and not the people that do the internet routers. Right, no. okay. They're a, a massive um, recommendation, by the way. Wondery brought out Business Movers podcast about the founder of Cisco. Oh, did they? And that is one of the best stories I've listened to on that. Oh, that I'm going to listen to that on the way home. So, that's because um, that's restarted by a, a woman. Was it? I mean, I'll just say that people go and listen to that. Cisco, um, we've really gone off piece here. But we have. But I think it's important. We'll bring it back. It's, yeah. Um, Cisco was founded by um, some university lecturers that were so frustrated with the network at their university that they created Cisco at really? university uh, to connect ah. all of the computers up at the university. I just love these stories. And that, mm. that's why I think it's worth talking about it. Then they went to the university and said, we've created all this technology. We should just put it together and sell it into the marketplace because it's going to change the world. And it did uh, because eventually that created like the networks that computers yeah. work on today. And um, the university Unicet. went, no, <laughs> no, because we're a university. university. Um, and so they just left. And they started it themselves, Cisco, uh, bootstraps. They were trying to, you know, the, uh, put money on credit cards, remortgaging houses. And then eventually... Oh, I love those stories. Yeah, like proper, running it from uh, 12 programmers working in their house. Yeah, yeah. You know, proper, proper. And they were academics. Yeah. Not, not entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. Not, like proper academics, very smart individuals. Um then they built Cisco up, um, and then they got venture capital, private equity involved, and they basically just managed them out of the business. And the uh, owners ended up divorcing. Um, oh, and it's really? all about the woman, because then the woman went to then move to England, the UK from America, then went to set up um, a famous makeup brand. Nige, yeah, while you're there, just so you can come in, can find out the lady, I think her name was Sandy. Um, the founder of Cisco, what was the makeup company that she then went on? So she was like a two-time entrepreneur in very two different very sectors, which is very rare, by the way. I think it's Sandy Lane is her name. Is it? I'm not sure. Sandy um, Lane, that sounds like a resort. <laughs> yeah, in Barbados. I'm, I'm sure it's uh, Sandy, her name. But anyway, whilst Nigel's doing that, we'll carry on with the podcast. Because it's fascinating. Uh, uh, Wondery, who actually you put me on to them. Yeah. Uh, they're an amazing podcast production company, way better than we are. And we're always very guilty that we're above them in the charts, just because we mess <laughs> we, around, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. But, but people give the people what they want. They just they like prefer actual us. information. That's fine. Um, okay, before we, executive producer Nigel, have we got any update on the, uh, on the Sandy Lane situation? Well, well, Coming to us live from just the other side of the camera. What was her actual name? What was her name? Sandy Lerner. I was nearly oh, what there. What a great name for a lecturer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. Born in 1955. Oh, here we go. We're having a life story. So, yeah. Chalton House, uh, one of our main projects, Chalton House, is in England. But doesn't say anything about the um, makeup as of yet. Oh, Christ. Hang on. 
It's a long Wikipedia page. It is a, long, it is a <laughs> massive Wikipedia page. Like we've got some biscuits to tide us yeah. over. <laughs> well, she started Cisco, okay. then she went on to do a makeup business <laughs> that was worth We'd billions. Yeah. Well. Okay, yeah. cool. Once Nige finally gets that, we will <laughs> come back at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Listeners will now stick around to the end because... What a uh, hook. Yeah, what a hook. What a hook for YouTube. Um, okay, so... Um, Should we go back to Logan and talk about his business rather yeah. than Wandry and makeup brands that we don't know nothing about, shall we? Um, so we had the two challenges. Third challenge, sales outf- uh, outlets are limited. Uh, you ask him where did he want to be in one year's time. He said aiming to invest into different areas of the industry. What does a business look like when it's finished? Multiple stores, leading supplier of used electrical wheelchairs and mobility scooters. Do you make the profit that you want to? If so, what is it? Business is profitable since day one, but on a constant growth phase currently. So they're reinvesting all their property, uh, all their profits. Final question, what do you do day to day with your time in the business? Oversee the business itself. Do any jobs when we are busy? Good lad. Um, deal with suppliers and accounts. And that's where he's at at the moment. I think by the sounds of the pre-chat chat, he's looking at potentially, he's only in the wheelchair part of it at the moment and he's going to scoot on over to scooters. I think, yeah, mobility scooters. I think yeah, 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 not yeah. like the live things you've got around <laughs> London. Where's the difference? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> get her off that scooter she's going to do herself in she's already yeah, got a bad yeah. hip um, right should we get him on the show and find out yeah. how accurately we describe the podcast um, the business to him Logan are you there can you hear us I certainly am thank you for being on mate um, thank you for your patience uh, we're, I'm just going to presume we've had your patience while we talked about yeah. wandering other podcasts for 15 minutes um, if you don't mind you will say this but you weren't going to so I'm going to do it for you um 30 seconds or so give us the summary of where the business is at for those listeners who may be intrigued about the the sector you're in my friend so basically we buy in uh, electric wheelchairs and refurbish them resell them online our main business is on ebay um so that is our main sales outlet we have a small shop but it just about breaks even um we're currently looking well obviously with your guys help looking to see whether we should open a much larger shop in a bigger sort of uh, city um and then the main side is the stock to cash flow so we're coming up to very high stock levels and whether we should keep investing into new stock or where do we cap the stock at the top oh lots of questions there so did you just to double check did you say that your main online retail outlet at the moment is ebay yeah. Okay. Yeah, and actually, I haven't even got a website, have you? No, so our website come down last week because we were getting a bit conned on SEO. We were paying monthly for it, and it was advertised under a builder in Lancashire. Fine. You, hang on, break that down for me. You were, you were coming up, your SEO ranking was coming up for a builder in Lancashire? Yeah, and not <laughs> anything to do with the industry we're in so we very quickly swapped our website provider what so did you pay someone that was doing like the seo but then would build the website for you on the back of it to get you to find you loads of leads that sort of thing yeah that's what we were doing um until we sort of i'm not fully clued up on the website side and seo um but once i got somebody that knew slightly what they were doing it turned out that they were advertising sector rather than us yeah you have to be careful of that stuff i mean look if you you, need, you need a website though don't you absolutely and yeah. sh- i would say it should not be linked or it should not be intrinsically linked to the person who does the seo for you You should have a website that stand alone that you could bring an seo expert into but somebody can build you a website and even if it's on a you know a shopify store that you own or um wix or framer or one absolutely of those shopify. i'm a big fan of shopify uh, I, you one, use it don't you they're one of the people that i really hope one day sponsor this podcast or my youtube channel put it out to the universe done just got an email from Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I i think you should absolutely be doing that you need a site so yeah. just think what what are the what are the fees on ebay at the moment uh on average because we promote each listing at two percent as well our average fees are about 14 percent wow we come on this you could build a website for two or three grand and then take more of the sales through that. Build, I, think you, I, mean, I think you could build a Shopify website for nothing and just do it yourself. Yeah. 
and it would be rubbish. Yeah, our website but... is going to be live by the mid of next week. Okay. Is it who? Who is the platform you use? Shopify. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, I think. Um, I think most programmers and developers can improve it. Um, I think it's good. So, um, your business. Let's let's discuss your businesses. Jones number one, managing stock to cash flow. Your concern is holding too much stock. Is it? Is that what's causing the problems in terms uh, of cash? We have quite. Yeah, we have quite good cash, but we're buying up way more stock than we're selling currently. Um, which we want to do to grow, but at the same time, we don't know where the ceiling is. Originally, my ceiling was 50 shares in stock, and now we're at about 120. Yeah. Well, you told us earlier off air as well that you're averagely selling one per day. Um, so I guess yeah. one of the things that you could do, and Jim's probably got a lot more sort of deep dive advice on this, but if you look at what would be the sort of the turnaround time that you would, what time does it take you to buy a chair? to refurb it and then resell it because you probably if you're doing one a day you probably don't need more than 60 in stock really you've probably got twice as much stock as you need right now haven't you so you either double your sales or you carry on the, the cadence that you've got it's mainly because of the different makes and models and specs so some yeah. have a lift uh, seat riser some are basic some go in a car right, right. some go off-road so it's like a car dealership almost. it's never as simple as you think is it jb cheap ones no. no i mean if it's all the same model then you would absolutely be correct do you know what how i would grow this business um i, I already had shopify <laughs> no no no, no. I mean, the pod. i'm guessing can you tell me what is an avatar customer um before i reveal my my darkest secret in terms how i would grow this business are they an elderly person are they people that have just had an accident um are they people both but just, just tell me what a customer is and why they come to you mainly it's elderly and disabled fine so one of the things that you said oh i would like to open up some shops and do some stuff like that and hopefully customers will come to you i don't think you should do that i think you should buy some long wheel based high wheel based vans and create mobile showrooms and put three or four um electric wheelchairs in the back of them and i would run google ads to your shopify website that allows people to book appointments and try the wheelchair free for seven days and you just drop it off at them if they like it they can then pay you that's how i would grow this business i mean it's so irresistible i think people just would go yes please can i do this have you ever thought about something like that Funny enough, my girlfriend actually suggested exactly See, that. she's smart. Is she um, single? Because me I and her are obviously... I didn't think it was a good idea, so I said it wasn't. <laughs> oh, you're not going to let her listen to this podcast, are you? No. I told you so. No. <laughs> but yeah, we recently purchased two new vans just simply because it was the end of year. Um, so we that yep. is definitely something we're going to... Then you need to get about. a travelling advisor open brackets salesman Sales close person. brackets yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're an advisor like think like uh, going to the apple shop that yeah. sort of quality um look, look we can leave it with you for seven days because these people you know i, I think or that you, you could do that like car hire credit card thing where um you it's charged to the card but not taken yeah um yeah I mean, but i would even i wouldn't even do it i think most people would just say yeah okay i'll, I'll take it straight away because these are disabled people, these are elderly people, and getting out to a, a, a showroom is difficult. Okay. Yeah, what are you laughing at? What's because well, I hiccuped? <laughs> yeah. What's funny? <laughs> it just made me laugh. Sorry, it just tickled me. What the hiccup? Yeah. Child. <laughs> um, uh, and I think, I think I would then have ten salespeople around the country or with their vans over a period of time by the way over a period of time that would then you your job as a business would be to get the appointments for them mm. and they see three or four people a day i think their hit rate will be amazing because these people have asked for the appointments then i would do magazine ads and uk gold tv sky ads they're very cheap yeah. to do gold radio yeah gold radio um uh, i would do direct mail uh, because you can get the data for people that are disabled probably and elderly very easily 
Um, and that's how I'd grow this business. I mean, it would be it's just beautiful, really beautiful. You should use the headline. We will slash the cost of your wheelchair, <laughs> not your tires. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's this Nigel's telling us something flyer in cruise brochure yeah flyers in cruise brochures yeah all of that stuff that woofties well off over 50s like to hang about in I think one of the other key things though you've got to find a way for your customer to be able to transact with you directly because at the moment you know you're paying a huge percentage for pretty much nothing because I bet they're I bet they're searching for that term you know that eBay's probably not the first place they're going Maybe to compare, uh, to compare prices potentially, but I bet it's a Google search first and foremost. So if you've got a good website with decent SEO, some well-written blogs with high, high searchable key phrases, I think you'll pop up. And then obviously you can just chuck some money at the Google ads. Yeah, yeah we've, we've just started on TikTok as well. So, so I, I mean, yeah, to, uh, I think has, you should... Yeah, go on. Uh, which has brought in a couple of customers. We're still building it as we speak, but just doing little reels on each wheelchair has definitely helped. Um, I haven't paid for any advertising or marketing uh, other than SEO since we started either. By the way, well, the little have. videos on TikTok, yeah. you Can should I just call it a real chair. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a real. But you absolutely have paid for marketing. You've paid eBay 14% of every sale. Yeah. So you have. Yeah. Which is very expensive. Yeah, very. This is a good business, though. By the way, mm. I, I mean, I'm that that mobile showrooms. Um, That's a great idea. So, are you thinking that they actually go and they can test one of them, or go and have a look at all of them? So or? There's two elements to the yeah, because I think you just have three or four in the back of the van that yeah. you can you know, show people at their house, yeah. get them to test it, try it. Um, I think that's just so powerful to increase the sales and then the the real job is you logan to become a marketeer of your business rather than a doer of your business which is what all entrepreneurs should work out is then how do you get more leads to fill up the traveling vehicles people and you just focus first of all within two hours of your location and then you'll have a you know another van based in birmingham another van based in london and they're going around and Oh, just could be such a great business, mm. and then you just book it. You've got to get very good at booking appointments. Yeah. And by the way, that, think, is um, a, that is a that is a end of this podcast. We'll be doing it. <laughs> well, to be fair, it is a tried and tested formula. That this is, you know, lots of industries do this. My feel would be becoming more of like a cold caller and get that kind of name around sort of the elderly and disabled. No, oh, because they're, they're booking. Sorry. There. It's, yeah, they're booking it. You're not just turning up and going, do you want to try a wheelchair, love? You know, this is <laughs> them asking you. This is them asking you. You know, this is the big, clear differentiator. It's happening with carpets and curtains now. You know, you used to go to Paul Simon. Blind companies do it a lot, don't they? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, people used to go to, you know, kitchens now. They used to have all them showrooms. Yeah, they've still got them showrooms. But lots of people are coming into the store, taking bits and saying, look, this is what you could have. And they've got... See that augmented reality, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's is, hard like, for, from a... This is why double glazing companies like Zenith have always done this sort of stuff. Because if you're doing the sale in the home, they can imagine the product in the home. So actually what you're saying, Jim, with actually get them using the, the item for seven days... That's yeah, a, that's I love a great little tactic. When because you know, like anyone that's in business and and um, are doing marketing, risk reversal is yeah. one of the marketeers' golden sort of things that they're trying to achieve. Is what? How can I risk reverse this for the customer? So if you don't like it, just give it back to us in seven days. Yeah, Come and they might need it. the other model. Yeah. You know, and that's great, you know, because then they tell their friends, oh, it's so good, you know, like I could just swap it over and they might go up for the premium model or oh, just stuff like that. It's so, you, you will get such good feedback mm. within the marketplace. It cost half the cost of buying a new one. Um, I could try it free for seven days to make sure I was comfy with it. You can set them the cushions and, you know, the put accessories on it like lights if they want to be like granny racers rather than boy racers. <laughs> Aloe wheels, <laughs> flash our wheels. Mm. Very proud of myself. I think it's a very good idea. Well <laughs> done, James. Well done, James Sinclair. You're again. He's done it yet again. Done it yet again. 
What does that What does that sound like to you, though, uh, Logan? Is that something that you're you're comfortable with? You know, is that something you know getting more real world with people? Does that fit comfortably with you as a as an operator? It sounds like it would, because you know you sound like a, a good guy. Yeah, so it's definitely something. I, I I'm a bit shocked because my girlfriend said this is that sort of model, and I shut it down. So I've got some groveling to do and go back to her and say I think it's now a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, very sweet. Um, you yeah. got to find a spin on it, though. You're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, but the thing that you didn't yeah, say, which is going to make it work, was X, Y, the seven day free trial. That That's yeah. your get out of jail card there. Yeah, right? You can yeah, have that yeah. one for free. That's, um, that's the one. <laughs> cool. Right. Well, Logan, have you got any questions you'd like to ask us about growing your business? So, uh, yeah, the first one is I've built the business from previous experience of just doing the business, everything in myself. Now I've sort of grown this business to where I am overseeing rather than working in it. Um, once it gets to that stage of you're kind of overseeing, I'm finding that I have some spare time. Do I look to move into this sort of area, but b bigger scale, so purchasing other businesses, or do I start looking elsewhere for different sort of sources of income? Well, my view is that, you know, your idea about growing into mobility scooters, I mean, I think that is also another week. Can you do them refurbished on the same model? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think you should absolutely do that, especially where people can try them free for seven days and uh, or you can bring them to the house and they can have a little view on them. Um, I think, yeah, all of that is a, a very smart thing to do, is it? What I don't think you're finished, you might have more time at the moment, but you've only got a 350, 400, 500,000 pound business. You should try and be working to get this into a five, 10 million pound business, and that will take a lot more of your time up. Okay. Because yeah. I think with the electric scooters, selling more of them, you've got to get good at marketing, mate. You've got to read some more books on marketing. Uh, read anything by Dan Kennedy. Um, he's really, especially marketing to this older age group, like learning how to write really good sales letters mm -hmm. and understanding headlines. You, that can make you very powerful and that will help you with any business decision or business leadership role that you do in the future how old are you at the moment logan uh, i'm 33 33 how did you end up in this space in the yeah. first place yeah we, we need to ask what's the question we need to ask how did you get your first customer how I, did you get your first customer i used to work for a company near enough doing the same thing in the healthcare industry and got made redundant and then um, not a very skilled person and i've always brought us old stuff so to go in this industry here i am yeah, but how did you, did you just put something on eBay and you got a sale and you went, yeah, let's do that again? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The previous company I worked for, I we sold on eBay and in the shop. Mm. Amazing. By the way, I, do think, you not it, think, sorry, I think it's still important you do have at least one shop because I think it is yeah. people trust. Do, uh, sorry, question for you, Jim. I know you're saying about like the retail thing potentially is not that profitable from the one store that logan's already got but do you think at the moment when there are so many good deals potentially on rents in high traffic areas because you know like every wilco's store is now gone you know every debenham store is gone there's you know you go down to any high street in the country and half of it is naff naff you know is there there's good deals to be done i imagine on high street high traffic yeah, but my, my my view on this is still these are people that are not mobile, elderly, and if you can come to them, I think that yeah, fair enough. I still think that's more important because you can be nationwide, then can't you? So yeah. you could have three or four drivers, sort of travelling advisors rather than yeah. salespeople, and they can just do. Birmingham one day, Manchester another. Well, you know, they can. It's just getting very good at getting all those appointments, yeah, which I link, think would yeah. come very easily, because, like you say, you know, everyone's getting older, but they're also getting thicker. You know, people are not as you know. You're seeing more and more people being seventy five plus that are needing these things, and um, I think it's a good industry. I think you've got a good business here, Logan, but. 
you need to grow it so it gets into the millions of revenue rather than the hundreds of thousands of revenue. And I think you can, especially by adding on the mobility scooters. What does the end game look like for you, Logan? I know you mentioned in the questions that we asked, like, what does it look like when it's finished? You were saying sort of like multiple stores, leading supplier. Based on this conversation, has that sort of shifted your, your thinking about it at all? Yeah, I would say it's... I definitely think that the on-the-road sort of shop sort of thing would be a lot better. Um, Don't so let I your girlfriend hear you say that. Quite... Yeah, I know. I think she might be outside the room, so it's going to be a scary one. <laughs> But um, I think it's going to be more mobile shop sort of thing to see whether we could get almost like a Luton or something like that and kit them out as like a retail shop in yeah, Luton. Yeah, absolutely. Do a good job. Deliver to your They're doing it with thing. sofas as well. There's a, a sofa company that's doing this as well now. I can't think of who they are, but they are doing the same thing. What, take the sofa to the house? Yeah, to try it. Ah. Oh. They just, um, I think it's one of like the, the posh sofas. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a very good business. Just, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, by the way, I've got the answer to the makeup question. It's Urban Decay. Yeah, I've got it here. I've got the, I've got the stuff. Yes, yeah, Urban Decay. Go on, Nigel, you tell us then. Yeah, so Urban Decay was started in January 1996 with just a range of 10 lipsticks and 12 nail varnishes. Mm. Uh, in 2000, they were bought by the luxury brand... Moe Hennessy Louis Vuitton. Oh, they have one of them ones. And then in 2002, the Phallic Group bought them. In 2009, they were bought by private equity group Castanier. Right. And then in 2012, they were bought by L'Oreal for an estimated $350 million. Yeah, well, when she sold to LMVH, wow. so she sold to Bernard Ornu, who's the richest man in the world at the moment, actually. He is. Yeah. But what I was trying to say that she wasn't a one-hit wonder. She went from Cisco Systems to Urban Decay. Mm. I think as well, the other thing for Logan, talk about one-hit wonders. I think if you've done this well with just electric wheelchairs, which is a niche in a niche, yeah. expanding that slightly to the like, ever so slightly wider sort of mobility market, I think you're going to go gangbusters, as you would say. Yeah, go gangbusters. I mean, I think the electric scooters... Um, the the ones for this marketplace, not the lime ones around London that we're talking about, um, I think would be very useful for you. I think you're right. And good luck. I can't wait to hear how you get on. Will you come on in a year's time and tell us? Yeah, definitely. More than happy. Good. Awesome stuff. Any other questions before you go? Or are you sufficiently filled up with entrepreneurial advice? Just one super quick one, if possible. What is the best way to find a good accountant? Um, meet 10. Arrange to meet 10. Uh, this is an outsourced accountant or an in-house one? Uh, outsourced. Yeah, just go meet 10. Um, I'm happy, if you're only based in Cambridge, I'll happily introduce you to my one. Um, for anyone that's listening about accountants, really, an outsourced accountant is only going to be as... Yeah, that there are better ones than others, but it only gets really good when you've got it in-house. The aim of all entrepreneurs and business owners is to employ an accountant before you can afford it and have them in-house as soon as possible. Once you've got an accountant solely working for you, oh, mamma mia, good times happening. <laughs> well, yeah, that big call that you were taking the piss out about earlier, where I was having that tens of millions of pounds worth of conversation, my own in-house accountant was on the call, and then the one I'm about to recommend was also on the call. Um, so, you know, when I'm having those good conversations, them serious conversations, I've got it at my disposal straight away to get a second opinion. So why would you have so always, your external accountant? Do you keep him on? Yeah, I pay him loads of money. In fact, if he's listening to this, it should be less because, again, <laughs> I've just recommended another great entrepreneur and business owner to you. Really, you should be giving me shares in the bloody accountancy practice. See, why, why are you winding me up? You made my blood pressure go up. No, no, no I didn't it mean that. It charges me too much. No, no, yeah, I'm wondering. But why, why is the in-house and the out-house yes. one there? Because I, think, I do think it's good to have it in-house, but have an, um, uh, someone out of External house. set of eyes. Yeah, basically, yeah. 
So is your so let's say the the in house account is like a CFO kind of role. They're right. they're they're dealing with the sort of the operational side of the business, and then he's almost um, is he the other fella? Is he like a backstop? Going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done that the right way, or have you thought about this R and D? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm coming up with all the ideas usually. So what are you paying? I mean, you. I don't know. You could, Why am you I could doing do, it? Yeah, you could do the accounts. Well, I'm the one can, that finds out all the new tax efficiencies. Just do everything, shall I? Oh, God, here he goes. Right, Logan, any final questions before we let you go, my friend? No, I think we covered pretty much everything. Awesome stuff. Where can people find you? Well, what's your new website going to be? Because by the time this goes live, your website's going to be available. Or should they just Google you and you're going to optimise it on Shopify? Where can they go and find out more about what you're doing, mate? Uh, can find us anywhere on socials uh, at Platinum Mobility. And our website's going to be platinummobility.uk awesome stuff thank you for being on brilliant the lovely logan there um very, very interesting sector there's every every single time we have a com we've had one of the conversations today i'm like that's a good business isn't it yeah yeah these are good businesses that these is a good are, business we're very lucky we get real businesses on with real entrepreneurs not people trying to hack the system with some get rich quick scheme these people are all going to do exceptionally well if they keep going do you if you if you were taking your foot off the the metaphorical pedal, which you're not going to do, but if you had a liquidity event, as we've been talking about in the last couple of episodes, if that was the case and you had, would you would you have like a little pot and allocate it into other people's businesses? Like that's a good business and he's yeah, a good yeah, operator. I, would you would you back that? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love. Well, I'd love to do Dragon's Den one day and actually be a dragon. You would be good on Dragon's Den, actually. Mm. I actually done. I done an audition for it, but they said no. But I just said, I get so. Like, no, no, no. I got through to the rich, producers. Handsome, successful. Yeah. yeah, got through to the producers, and then unfortunately, we done a we done a show reel for them and everything. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Last year, twenty twenty three. So it was between you and Gary Neville. <laughs> no, <laughs> they mugged you off for Neville. Before. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I I had an interview with them, and um, did they come to you? or You go to them. No, someone found me that used to work on the BBC and said, you should be doing some business TV content. You You're should really be, good. to be fair. You, know should, should. you should do like a, have you ever watched Hotel Inspector with Alex Polizzi? Yeah, yeah. You should do Business Inspector. Yeah, well, anyway. Why? We should pitch that. So we made a a um, a a showreel type thing. It wasn't a showreel, but something similar. Uh, and we sent it to the BBC and I had an a interview with... Um, some producers at the BBC um, multiple interviews did you uh, and they said unfortunately no for now but I just thought to myself I'll just get bigger on YouTube and I'll get so big that they can't ignore me and I'll start making five podcasts a day because that's what I've done today is that what is that what I'm actually here for I'm here to yeah. I'm, I'm here as you, like your, your fluffer well you might <laughs> for come Dragon's on there Den. with me we could do it together I doubt it I, doubt, I don't think they're going to <laughs> it's nice that a couple of people on YouTube think we're the ant and deck of entrepreneurship, but I don't think we're going to get that past the beam, are we? No. Realistically. But I would like to do it. I mean, I would like to invest in people. Not now, so please don't don't message me because I'm using all my own gas to grow my companies. But in the future, yeah. How I think. far in the future? How much? How much more can you do by yourself before you start supporting other businesses? Not like as in like financially and taking it. Would that not be a good use of your time at this point? Where no. you can take a chairman role and you can do like a call with them, like an hour call once a week and have five little businesses and have a you know, 25, 30% stake in each little business. Yeah, maybe. But at the moment, the answer's no. I'm not pitching you, by the way. <laughs> no. At the moment, the answer's no. But in the future, I think it's highly likely that I will do something like that. Okay. Did you think metaphoric, like, you know, speaking, uh, you know, pitching it out there, like you would potentially buy a podcast agency though? You would take an, you know, like say the the Europe's most successful podcast launch agency. You'd you'd back that, wouldn't you? I would only invest in the people, so it'd be depending on who the people are that are running it. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> Don't I'll let go. the guys from High Performance Podcast know. Um, right, fantastic. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the conversation. Again, gr good luck to Logan. I look forward, we should definitely, he's one we should circle back on to in six months' time. Absolutely. I cannot wait to find out how the conversation goes with his partner when she, he has to go tail between his legs and goes, you know, you know, I'll tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. Actually, you're an entrepreneurial genius. There you go. I, I, think, I do think that was a good idea, it. and that's how I would have, if it was me, that's how I'd grow that business. Yeah. 
Well, there you go. Awesome stuff. We will be back with more tangible, actionable business insights on the next episode. If you have enjoyed the episode, please feel free to click the like button if you're listening on YouTube or give us a five-star review on podcast. Or if you think, oh my God, that Jimbo Sinclair, you know, I've got some good ideas. Well, you think the good ideas are on the podcast. Wait until you see him live at one of his events. Are you going to do a, do a little bit of nice to tell, to tell us all about it. It's nice to tell us all about it. Here we go. Well, guys, oh, 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 wait, 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 sorry, yeah. sorry, nice. Sorry, I've, I've messed up. Here's your jingle. Sorry, nice. This is Nigel's jingle. Uh. Well, guys, hot off the press. As we're talking on this podcast, we have actually had a sale of a ticket for Investorpreneur on the 26th you of February. Make it up, so we could not make it up. We have actually got ten seats left for this event. So get in quick. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you were going at the end of the jingle fantastic <laughs> and he done that without seeing the how long he's got to go some people have just got it I, I need some to tell everyone what Investorpreneur is this is a brand new seminar and event that I've created this is for high growth entrepreneurs Gosh, there we go well, it's for high growth entrepreneurs that want to get their business ready for sale. Um, oh, is that I, what it's for? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, how do you get maximum value? What can you do with the money afterwards? Oh. Um, and I've got special guests from Grant Thornton, who are one of the biggest sellers of business in the UK, to tell business owners and entrepreneurs what they need to do to get their business ready for sale. Oh, see, I was messing up. Now I'm interested. Where can they find out more information? On your website? Yeah, jamesinclair.net, or you can what's message the, what's uh, the date us of the on next Instagram. One? Uh, but there's only one a year we're doing this. And, uh, one a year? Mm. What scarcity? So when, it's investorpreneur, it? basically, because there's three levels of entrepreneurship. Solopreneur, entrepreneur, investorpreneur. And so this is if you want to be in the top level and you're, you know, you're starting to generate millions in revenue, you're making decent profits, um, and you want to know what 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 to do at that level. That's oh, the event. this sounds period. good. There'll, there's only be 30, there's there'll only be 35 people there, um, and I think we've got... Well, 10 left. So if you want to come along, it's a few hundred quid for your ticket. Uh, message me at James Sinclair Entrepreneur on Instagram. And this uh, is not me blowing smoke up your bum here, but there's lots of people now who make their money telling people how to sell businesses and the only thing they're selling is information. Mm. There's lots of them out there. So I think mm. the fact that you're doing it because you're actually doing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a great event. But if that's a little bit too much for you, all the other events are really good as well. All of them on my website, jamesinclair.net. But what I do want to say is I just want to find... Nigel, have we actually got the dates for business broadcast live uh not yet we no. think we're going to be doing that in june june tracy's uh talking to trafalgar square theater or nope. the square theater that's the square theater Don't the wrong trafalgar place. square is a new one yeah <laughs> very niche not many people know that it's an underground club yeah, no yeah. that's where there's a really good car park. it's open plan <laughs> Um, no, we're going to be uh, bringing this podcast live to the Leicester Square Theatre uh, in June this year. And me and JB will be live on stage. We have about an audience of 300 in the centre of London. That'd be good, wouldn't it? No, you can bring some previous guests on. Yeah, we, we, we don't know the format yet, although we, we do know it's going to be fantastic. We should have Logan and he should come on one of his scooters. <laughs> yeah, like we could do that. Off the back of it. <laughs> Logan, live in London. <laughs> One of his quick scooters. <laughs> Look at that. There anyway, if you fancy that, um, check out the website, jamesinclair.net. But from me and from Jimbo, we'll see you on the next episode of the podcast. See ya. Ta-da.